Hey, Laura here from The Unprofessional, and today I'm gonna turn this fence into some bike storage. Now when I say turn this fence, I'm gonna use this fence actually as the back of the bike storage. I'm going to put three more four x four posts to match these four x four posts. And then rather than put fencing, I'm gonna build wall panels. I also should point out that if you use a fence like mine, it's not gonna be completely watertight. I'm using this for bikes that would otherwise just be outside in the rain, so that's fine with me. But with a few modifications, you could easily make this waterproof. If you're gonna do something like this with your fence, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. One is the fence should be in pretty good shape. So this fence is about, I think it's four years old. It should last another 15 years probably, hopefully. Um, it is cemented directly into the ground, which is what I plan to do with the additional posts that I'm gonna set. There's certain kinds of fences that won't work or they'll work, you would just have to modify them a little bit. The ideal fence for this type of shed would have a line of sturdy wood posts to attach a header to support roof rafters. Now this can also be done without an existing fence. You just need to set some posts where a fence would otherwise be. My fence is five feet, three inches tall, and the three posts span nine feet. So this is gonna be the back wall of my shed and the total dimensions will be nine feet by five feet and my opening is gonna be six feet, one inch tall. Now all of this is completely customizable and it's gonna depend a lot on what you're starting with. Speaking of what I'm starting with, my first step was to clear the space. My floor is gonna be gravel, but you could easily do this on a cement pad or even build a wood floor. The posts on my existing fence are a bit off. So I knew from the beginning that I wasn't gonna be able to set the new posts in a way that created a 90 degree rectangular structure, which is fine, but I did want the roof to have 90 degree angles because it's a lot easier to put metal panels on a square roof. So here's how I did that. Here you can see six posts and the connecting wall panels. As long as the rows of the three posts are parallel, I can attach a header to each row with a little overhang and my roof can still have 90 degree corners. The small gaps between the wall and roof will be outside the structure and won't be noticeable at all once I attach my soffit material. Maybe this won't even be an issue for you. I just wanted to point it out in case you're starting with a not so perfect fence like me, which is completely fine. With my ground clear, I dug post holes two and a half feet deep, knowing that my posts would stand a little over six feet above the ground. I use quick setting cement and it really helps to have an extra set of hands. To watch a quick video that explains how I set fence posts, you can click on the video in the corner or you can find it in the show notes. Once my posts were set and dry, I built a small frame on the lower edge of the slope and added gravel so that the floor was level with a very slight slope away from the house. With the floor and post done, I attached a temporary header to make sure I was happy with the height and so that I know exactly how high to build the walls. I clamped a two x four at an angle from the top of the fence to my header and drew a line where the two x four meets the four x four post. This is a lazy person's way of avoiding math to find the angle. Then I just matched my blade to that angle and cut both sides of my two x four. This piece is the top of the wall frame and attaches to the two four x fours just like a fence. I even use the same kind of brackets that you would use for a fence. These walls will not bear the weight of the roof. They function solely to protect the bikes and look neat. I lined up the brackets to the inside edge of the four x fours, which is important to attach the siding and for the overall look of the walls. I attached a two x four between the posts at the bottom as well. Then I measured two by twos for the rest of the wall frame. Two attached to the four x fours and two are attached to the top and bottom two x fours to give the siding something to be attached to. Here's a look at how the frame supports the siding. And here you can see why the frame is attached to the inside of the four x fours rather than to the middle of the four x four. I use cheap pressure treated fence pickets for my siding and I cut them to fit right between the four x fours with about an eighth of an inch gap. So putting on these pickets, it's gonna be pretty easy. Um, I'm using one and a half inch screws. I'm using some spacers. I am admittedly taking some shortcuts and I'm telling you this just to own it. I'm just not trying to overthink this too much. I'm just trying to get these up get a roof on this and have a place to put my kids bikes so um but it's gonna look great i think i hope i attached the first picket flat with screws and made sure it was nice and level i use exterior screws compatible with pressure treated wood all right so i know my first one is level i'm gonna put the rest of the screws in and then i will show you how i continue on up so yeah i am leaving a little bit of space 
between my siding and the ground uh, because I think that's probably wise. My spacers are three fourths of an inch shorter than the width of the siding. This creates an angled overlap. By placing the screws at the top of each board, the following piece hides the screws. Even though I used spacers, I checked the level every so often just to make sure I was on track. I continued to the top, letting the siding overhang the frame, then trimmed it off with a reciprocating saw. With the sides and walls built, I removed the temporary header and cut the post to their final height. The front wall was easy because I didn't have to deal with the angle. I only added one two x two in the middle, along with two attached to the four x four posts. Bike storage is coming along. I got my walls up and today I'm ready to tackle the roof. And if my kids stay entertained long enough, uh, I might even get the roof materials up. But today I'm just gonna go for the header across the top here and another header across the back. And then I'm gonna put up uh, my rafters. I'm gonna be attaching my rafters with hurricane ties. Uh, I did a lot of thinking about doing bird's mouth cuts. Uh, but in the end, I think that my structure is going to be fine with just the hurricane ties. Those insects are really loud this morning. Okay, I'm ready to get started. I'm attaching a 2x4 header to all three posts with heavy-duty 4-inch structural screws. Here you can see how the header extends beyond the 4x4s on both sides. I attached another 2x4 header to the back of the fence 4x4s as well. My rafters will sit across both headers and attach to the higher header with hurricane ties. The bottom end of the rafters will either attach to the 4x4 fence posts or be toenailed through the header with 3 inch screws. I cut all my rafters at the angle of the roof, allowing for a 14 inch overhang at the top and a 4 inch overhang at the back or eave side. I made equal marks on every rafter so that I could easily line it up to the edge of the headers. Another way to be sure all of your rafters are aligned is to attach the end rafters and then run a string between them. If all of the other rafters touch the string without pushing it out, you've done it right. Attaching some of the rafters directly to the 4x4s that are cemented into the ground gives this roof some extra stability. And it makes me feel perfectly fine about just toenailing the rest of the rafters to the header. With hurricane ties holding the rafters at the top, I know this roof is not coming off. With all of the rafters attached, I added one by four purlins. I tried to space the purlins out pretty even, but I wasn't that worried about being exact. I used five purlins total for my roof. These are not pressure treated because the metal roof will sit directly on top of the purlins and pressure treated wood has a way of corroding metal roofing. To make sure my headers can really support the weight of the roof, I added additional 45 degree supports between the header and the four by four posts. Then I put up my fascia boards, which I pre-cut at an angle and painted. I got this on Amazon. It's a really simple sliding door hardware. It connects in the middle. As you can see, I got eight feet, even though this is longer than eight feet, um, because I'm just gonna set the wheels in a little bit. If this isn't level, then you have a problem. Or rather, I have a problem. And here's a sneak peek with the door frame. You can see it works great, even though the track is a little bit short. I just set the wheels in and it's not a problem at all. Before attaching my metal roof panels, I added drip edge to all four sides. Now I probably didn't need to do it to all four sides, but it actually looks really nice. I figured out the length of my panels and I outsourced the cutting because it was just too many sparks. This is not a metal roof tutorial, but I am gonna show you what I'm doing. Now I'm sticking with my motto of not overthinking this. My plan is to have the metal roof overhang the edge a little bit here and then have it overhang the eave but it's going to come flush with the top. All right, so I'm just gonna run the sealant tape all the way down from the top edge. We'll see how this is, how it works. You know the roof is sturdy when you climb around on it for a while, as I have, so I'm not worried. All right. Oh, 
Oh shoot, my tape fell. I applied butyl tape to the first edge, then followed the manufacturer's instructions, attaching to each purlin with a metal to wood roofing screw. Not too loose, but not too tight. I also put screws in the connection points right on the ridge. To keep the critters from making homes in my roof, I used closure strips at each end. There was one tricky point where the arbor fence post stuck through the roof. I cut around it as best I could with tin snips, and then I used a pipe boot, silicone tape, and silicone caulking to seal it up. I'm happy to report that after three really hard rains, I don't have any leaks. The door was really easy, and I have a separate video that shows these steps in more detail. I started with a frame made from leftover 2x4s that I connected with pocket screws. Then I attached cedar tongue and groove boards together, laid the frame on top, and screwed through the frame into the back of each of the cedar boards. This way, no screw holes showed. I probably should have used adhesive, but the tongue and groove connection plus the screws make this pretty solid. Once all the slats were attached, I used a circular saw to cut it to size by following the edge of the frame. Then I attached the hardware. Next, I attached the anti-jump pieces and the stops. For the guide at the bottom, I kept it simple and used two L brackets. I could have used a router to make a channel in the bottom of the door, but because my door leans in and is pretty hefty, I just let the door sit on the outside of the bracket so that the weight of the door and the slight lean keeps it firm against the bracket. The track stops keep the door from going past the brackets. It would take a lot to make the door swing out, so all things considered, this was a really good solution for my bike shed. For my soffit material, I used painted vinyl tongue and groove panels. Vinyl tongue and groove is actually a lot harder to work with than wood tongue and groove. But with a little bit of glue and a finish nailer, it does the trick and it looks pretty good. You've probably noticed a lot of outfit changes. This project could be done in two weekends. If you have two people and you don't have kids, if you have kids, I don't know, months, I guess. I'd say one day for leveling the gravel, setting the posts, uh, day two, building the walls. Day three could be the roof. Day four, the door, the track, the trim, and then maybe one more day, one more like afternoon, two more hours for paint. I also use my projects before they're done, which kind of slows down the time frame to finish. <laughs> this last part is just a matter of preference, but I don't like being able to see the sliding door track in the hardware. So I'm gonna attach a one by six piece of trim and just make this part look really clean. I have a system for attaching headers or trim on a, an angled ceiling. Uh, what I do, and this is what I'm gonna do this time, is I cut um, wedge pieces at the angle to compensate for the angle. So you can see this, actually, it's cut in an angle. When I put it here, it makes a 90 degree surface so I can attach my header to this 90 degree surface. And the way I attach this to the rafters is uh, with a one by four or two by four, or two by six, whatever. In this case, it's gonna be a one by four. Now it would be ideal if I had a one by four that would go the entire length of this, but I don't have that here. I have so much scrap wood left over that I wanna use because I don't wanna go back to the hardware store. So I'm actually gonna make two pieces. I'm gonna put it up, I'm gonna attach these, and then I will be done. And that's a wrap. And now I can finally take all of the bikes out of my garden shed and have an actual place for my lawnmower. And that's pretty much it. I'm happy to call this project done. Hey, this is Laura from The Unprofessional. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe. And if you like this content, you can head over to my website, theunprofessional.com for more.